What is sweat and what is water? Well, it can be hard to differentiate when you're exercising in what is basically a heated bath of water. So you may have wondered, how much do I sweat when I'm swimming? Well, we wondered too. It's time to find out. Now, when I was a young swimmer starting out with squad training, I distinctly remember having it drilled into me that I must always have a water bottle with me on poolside. So I always took my bottle, left it at the end of the pool, and it became a bit of a habit that still sticks now. I didn't, however, tend to ever drink very much during the session, if at all, but would drink afterwards, and that's maybe a discussion for another day. But our coach also suggested us using a slightly interesting homemade concoction, which at the time I tried. It was a teaspoon of salt with half of the bottle being orange juice and half water. I mean, maybe that was why I didn't drink much during my swim, but I realized now that that was basically a homemade kind of improvisation of electrolytes. I've obviously since then learned a lot about staying hydrated, electrolytes, and the importance of that whilst exercising. But all of that has been based around testing an experience of sweating whilst on land. Now, I'm really curious to see if it translates directly to swimming or if there's some other differences that we need to consider. A quick bit about sweating itself. I know it's a glamorous topic. We sweat to control our body's temperature. When we exercise, we are always producing heat. Sometimes it's not very noticeable because our body is so good at maintaining that temperature homeostasis, keeping it exactly where it needs to be. We function optimally between 36 and 38 degrees core temperature. But when we go above that, we're gonna see a significant reduction in performance. To counteract this temperature rise, we sweat, our body's main and most effective method at keeping itself cool. And that should work the same in the water as it does out of the water, but it doesn't for a variety of reasons. You see, the main reason that sweat cools us down is not the sweat leaving our bodies and taking heat with it, it's the evaporation of that sweat from our skin's surface, then that takes the heat with it. So when we're in the water, that effect is severely diminished. Now, how hot do you get in the water? Well, that depends on a lot of factors. Firstly, the temperature of the water, but also how hard you're pushing, how hard the session is, and also the temperature of the air above the water and also how humid the air is above the water. Well, with all of those factors to consider that James has just mentioned, plus the fact that when we're swimming, we obviously can't see how much we're sweating, it is really hard to know that, that our sweat rate in the pool is going to be anything comparative to, say, running, for example. Well, there was a study back in 2010 that has come up with some interesting numbers on this. So it compared the sweat rate of swimmers, runners, and non-athletes. Interestingly, it was not comparing the sports. They had all participants doing a 30-minute effort on a static bike in a hot environment. Admittedly, it was a relatively small study with just 30 participants, 10 from each category. However, the findings were distinct. It showed runners with the highest sweat rate, then swimmers, and then the lowest sweaters were the non-athletes. Well, to explain these findings, it was suggested that swimmers maybe don't benefit as much from having a high sweat rate when they're in the pool compared to runners. And then the same theory can almost be applied to those non-athletes as they are not so often going to be raising their body temperature. Therefore, the bodies don't need to be able to find a way to bring the body temperature back down so quickly so they have less of that sweat response. I mean, maybe I wasn't going so far wrong when I wasn't drinking in the pool and now maybe my body does more running, it's got more used to sweating. I don't know, it's still gonna be very hard to test it. But there's been a few other studies that have actually backed up that swimmers, as elite athletes go, have a lower sweat rate just overall. So it's quite an interesting finding, but if you want to read more of the study that we've just included, we will share it in the description beneath this video. Well, unless you're a pure swimmer watching this, I mean, swimming your whole life, you're probably wondering how this translates to you. I mean, you probably haven't specifically adapted to swimming in that water environment, and your sweat rate probably hasn't adapted to it either. In fact, with sweat rates, they're completely individual. Everyone will have a different sweat rate, and everyone will have a different sweat concentration uh, that is their kind of normal. And this will actually carry over to swimming. Your sweat rate will be much the same in the water as it was out of the water. 
In fact, there's one study that found that everyone is affected by the temperature of the water. They tested swimmers in 29 degrees Celsius and 33 degrees Celsius and found that for that four degree increase in temperature, almost everyone's sweat rate more than doubled. That's an increase, a significant increase in temperature, but it's a very significant increase in sweat loss. The air temperature is also going to have an effect. Now, if you've ever spent any time at all on poolside, you will realize how hot and humid that is. And that's gonna have an effect to you swimming compared to say an outdoor pool. Now, all research is indicating that even if you are not a pure swimmer, you are still more likely to sweat less in the pool than you are out on your runs. Obviously ignoring those freezing cold winter runs. But the exact amount is really open to interpretation and is gonna be changeable depending on so many of those factors. But all of that said, you're still gonna be losing fluids. And we all know that excessive fluid and electrolyte loss will affect your performance. So if you're even someone like me who doesn't feel that thirst when you're swimming, it's gonna be extra important to make sure that you nail your hydration strategy both pre and post your swim. Also, as with every session, make sure you rehydrate in immediately afterwards. So have a full bottle at the ready for after your session uh, and make sure you're taking that in straight away afterwards. This is particularly important after open water because you can't reach for a bottle at any point during the session. And on the point of open water, open water can actually provide another hydration challenge. When it's cold in the open water, the vasoconstriction can increase your blood pressure. We can actually increase the need to pee, which actually leads to a bit of dehydration. So you need to rehydrate even after a cold open water swim. Swimming or not, we recommend just staying hydrated as I mean, it is proven to aid your performance. Yep, water is life. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our other swimming videos or other triathlon videos. Thanks for watching and happy swimming.